gig. He's at a new website. Will, tell us about Tested.com. So um, the Tested.com started when I sat down and was thinking about what it was like when I was a kid, you know, technology-wise. Right. And I mean, we lived in a house. We had kind of one TV. We had a little <laughs> satellite, we had house, a big huh? giant satellite dish. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, house. It was the house in the country. If you had a big way, giant satellite dish, way out dish. in the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a couple. Of I mean, we had two telephones. Nobody had cellular phones or anything. Nobody like had that. answering machines. I, we didn't have a computer when we were young. We way had to back carry then. around vinyl records. Yep. Yep. Sorry. <laughs> so, I mean, but the thing I realized is. Like sometime in the last 15, 20 years, I woke up and, and we, we were in the future. Right. Right? And, and here we are, and, and kind of nobody Minus really the, appreciates the that. Thing. I mean, you guys appreciate that. But I, I do. I feel, like, I feel like a lot of people aren't necessarily really appreciative of the fact that, that you know, I carry an iPhone in my pocket that's essentially my computer 10 years ago. This is, this is the line you've jumped where you've gone from like young dude to old I know, fart. I know, I know. <laughs> well, I turned 35 last week. So, oh, my goodness. You know, I'm, an, I'm an old dude now. But, it did, but yeah, it's like you kids don't appreciate I mean, imagine what it's going to be like in 20 years. I, I mean, that's the thing is I can't imagine what it's going to be like in five years, much less 20 years. So, I mean, we're, we're looking at the kind of pace of innovation. We're looking at the things that are happening in smartphones and all the mm -hmm. all the different technology, the home theater technology. It's and not just PCs. It, it's not just PCs anymore. Um, not that I, I think the PC is going anywhere. I think the PC has a long, really healthy future. You're, you're very giddy. You're very excited. I'm excited. But what's the core? I mean, because I look at tested and I don't see like looking for the next jetpack of the future. I see hands-on testing. I see how-to. Well, I, I mean, see, it's practical. Right. So it's how to do more? A, it's a little how to buy the good stuff. Like, you know, it's a little more popular mechanics and popular science. Well, I mean, that's that's the that's there's the love intention. for both there. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the thing is, we're we're focusing on the products that that I care about and that you care about and that people are excited about. So the really, I mean, I'm going to say the word. It's aspirational products. It's kind of a not a good word, but but we're focusing on that stuff. The stuff people are really excited about, and then showing people how to do more with the stuff that they buy mm -hmm. and how to get more value out of those purchases. That's actually part of what you know. He, he's actually doing a lot of hands-on video. Some of it involves strange uses for common <laughs> latex or rubber items around the house. Yes. I'll let you find that video. It's the first one on the website. Yes. But we're talking about a couple of recent articles. How to use an old router to expand your Wi-Fi network. How to find your nearest cell phone tower for fun and profit. Yeah, so, I mean, really, it's about, you know, everybody has this problem, right? My router's right. in my garage. It's in a corner of my house. Basically, that means that there's another third of my house that has no coverage. And I know you guys have talked a ton about how to expand your Wi-Fi and all that, so your audience probably knows all Parabolic about that. Parabolic reflectors, point. better antennas, exactly. better receiver strength at the far end. Well, but one of the things we found is that a lot of that stuff doesn't really work for N routers. Mm -hmm. So if you if you have a MIMO N router with those three antennas, then adding the parabolic reflectors just makes things much, much worse in, <laughs> in, in our practical hands-on testing. Right. Um, so we, then we showed people how to take an old router, uh, plug it into an Ethernet cable or power line network or something like that, and make a whole new bubble of Wi-Fi in what was previously a dead spot. So um, all, all sorts of stuff like that. I mean, it's basically finding joy and love in technology, which I know is a lot a familiar topic to you. I think it's more like reducing the pain level in technology. Well, I mean, but the pain level is going down and the joy is going up is the way I look, like to look at it. So. <laughs> yeah, and, and, uh, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll go with you on that one. Having, having recently solved my wireless end problems, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay that one that, I'm going to agree with that one. Okay. What's going on with the finding your nearest cell tower for fun and profit? Well, so, I mean, part of the part of the thing about finding cell towers is that you know it helps when you're looking at houses, looking at right. places to live, all that kind of stuff. I mean, beyond that, it's not a whole, it's not a hugely well, practical you, I mean, thing. How do you find a cell? I mean, are you basically thinking like, well, okay, my contract's up, my carrier doesn't work very well where I live. What do you like? Track down the, the nearest cell towers to see which, in theory, I, sh which I mean, which carrier has the closest cell if, tower? If, I, as somebody who's lived in AT and T dead spots, the last three places I've lived, <laughs> that is increasingly important to me to make sure that the next time I buy a house, the next time I move into a new place, I, I want coverage. So right? how do you actually find? So I mean, there's databases on the internet. You can go, uh, you know, search for your area, and you see the lights, see the little dots on the map, exactly where the towers are. <laughs> so then you can ch you can look and say, oh, look, there's a giant hill in between me and the nearest tower, and that's going to cause problems. So your but your your house right now isn't it like in between two AT and T towers? My, my house is in a total coverage zone. And I'm still dead, so I don't know what the problem is. I think I may, it might just be me. So Maybe I mean, I'm a bubble of AT and T dead spot. Apparently, I'm a bubble of <laughs> Verizon dead spot when I moved from my old house to my new house. I moved six blocks or eight blocks, and I went from coverage to no oh, coverage. It's so, it's so it's so brutal. I mean, why? It's just got to drive you crazy. Did you, did you pull the neighbors too, or are you, you basically going I, by? I haven't the gotten that far yet, but you know, Google at least is, is keeping track of all that stuff for us now too. So I mean, maybe one day we'll have a Google dead spot map from all the the vans driving around. That's a really scary thought, actually. Well, I, I, I mean, like that. Yeah, they're gonna have the map overlay, the property line overlay, the. 
Exactly. The exactly. The bracket overlay. Right. The, the, <laughs> the plumber coverage area overlay, the whether you're connected to sewer or to septic tanks overlay. And then they'll come up with the, you know, <laughs> the uh, social security number overlay. And, well, that, and that's, that might be too far. Too far? I mean, we live in a world where there's very little privacy left, but I think I like my social security number to be in my wallet where it belongs. Good. Now I know where to find it. Well, what's the, what's, <laughs> I'm not even, I'm, I, I didn't steal his identity, I promise. <laughs> what's the most popular stuff on the site? Um, so the most popular stuff, we're doing a ton of uh, coverage of MakerBot stuff. So we bought uh, one of the MakerBots, you know, the, the mm -hmm. basically it's a $1,000 CNC device that spits little globs of plastic. We've been doing a ton of stuff with that, just kind of, I mean, A, building it was a four-day extravaganza. I, I should point out this spitting little stuff. Basically, it, it makes objects. It, 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 yeah. There's instead, a, of, of, instead of like CNC milling away stuff, it actually exactly. adds so up it's, stuff it's to It's an additive digit. process, and, mm -hmm. it, and it basically it spits out a little, little stream of plasticky goop. It, it's like 220 degree ABS plastic. And what you do is you feed in a 3D model, mm -hmm. uh, and you can make it in SketchUp or, or Blender or any number of free applications. You run it through a script that slices it, uh -huh. and then you you know it it, it does the it script sp basically spits, spits it out and then it lifts up a little bit and spits out another layer and lifts it up and sp spits another layer and Is it, it does goes it, on and on. Do you get particularly fine details? Or um, sounds, it, spitting sounds kind of like globby and kind of like when you're good at it, you get fine details. So at Maker Fair this weekend, I met the guys who actually built the you know whose machine it is basically, uh -huh. and they were getting much better detail than I was. But they gave me some good calibration tips. So we're going to go back to the drawing board tomorrow and give it another uh, give it another test print. So far, I printed a ton of little cubes. <laughs> And then like a whistle and a human hand model and you printed some a goofy whistle. stuff. I That's printed a whistle, really yeah, fun. like a coach's whistle. How big of a thing um, can you make? It's they call it a cupcake CNC because it prints something about the size of a cupcake. So it's uh, four inches by four inches and about three inches high. I like that cupcake yeah. CNC. So I mean, we'll bring it by sometime and, and uh, show you how it works if you want. Any exciting? Well, obviously this is exciting. What else is coming up on the website? Uh, we we posted a ton of Maker Fair coverage this week. Uh, you know, all sorts of interesting stuff. We're doing how to build a home server next week. Cool. Uh, so we're doing a really low power machine, whole bunch of hard drives, like six terabytes of storage or three terabytes of storage. We haven't decided exactly yet. Um, More and. Well, the nice thing is you can always add more. No, 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 no. You so want you start all the cheap, storage now. Start cheap and then go big later. Because <laughs> um, the hard drives are only going to get cheaper, right? This is true. Yeah, so... Uh, Every time I turn it, like three terabyte hard drives probably by the end of this year. All that kind of stuff. We, um, we're posting a bunch of phone reviews. We have uh, Kin phones going up next week, Incredible, HTC Incredible. Um, and, you know, we, we the thing we like to do with testing is spend a little more time with them than right. maybe some other folks do. So we actually sit down and use it for two or three weeks and, you know, really hammer at it. <laughs> I like that thought. Will you come back with the, the cupcake? Sure thing. The then. CNC cupcake? Cupcake. CNC, uh, MakerBot CNC. MakerBot CNC. The cupcake. It's like the cupcake's the subtitle for the name of the device. You come back in a couple weeks to show that off? Sure thing, dude. Thanks so much, man. Always a pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, Will Smith, awesome stuff. You want to see more, head over to tested.com. <laughs>